What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Um, Getting into this episode of GH, I'm happy Brando is finally being brought into the fold where Sasha is concerned because he wasn't believing nothing that she said when she kept trying to tell him that she was fine, she didn't relapse. He wasn't buying it. And thank God Gladys is there. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> But thank God Gladys is there to keep her on the straight and narrow because she's going to need all the help she can get. Um, and, you know, Brando finally realized that's why Gladys moved in with them, you know, to kind of keep an eye on Sasha and make sure that she's not, you know, reverting back to old ways. Because Gladys, you know, she recognizes the signs of an addict, you know, somebody who's relapsing and stuff because of Brando's situation, his former addiction. Um, so she recognized those signs and Brando, you know, he's just trying to be there for her and give her support and she needs it. And I'm glad he recommended that she talk to Kevin and stuff and maybe get into rehab because she needs it. She's not going to kick this habit by herself, you know, even with Gladys there to keep an eye on her, even with Brando as a support system, everybody around her as a support system. She needs like professional help at this point. You know what I mean? Like, I think a center is good for her. And I think that's what she needs. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. <sighs> Nicholas is a fool. <laughs> Nicholas is a damn fool. If he really think Esme's not going to tell Ava or she's not going to play him in some sort of way, he dumber than I thought. Like, sir, go to the Rite Aid, go to the CVS, go wherever pharmacy you need to go and pick that girl up a plan B. Get her a plan B. I'm telling you, you will thank me later. <laughs> Something tell me she trying to, you know, have a little prince or princess in the oven. I'm just saying, like, you, you need to clear that up, Nicholas, before that becomes a problem. Because something tells me that that may be a problem. Because I'm like, did I even use protection in that room? I doubt it. I don't think they use protection because the only protection I saw them use was when they locked that door. So nobody could walk in that motherfucker. I'm just saying. He need to get that girl plan B, do something, because that's the last thing Nicholas is going to need right now is her popping up talking about she pregnant. It ain't going to take a rocket science to do the math. Her and Spencer ain't been having sex lately, so you do the math. You know what I mean? Like, come on now. Nicholas, get on top of this fool. Um, And it's so funny watching Esme and Spencer get upset with Ava because she's changing the rules to um his allowance in my opinion she has every right to change the rules to the allowance because the original rule was they had to move out and now since that's not happening well what else you want her to do y'all gotta behave you want your ten thousand dollars every week you gotta behave you know esme sitting there trying to snap i'm like esme please go sit down somewhere before you get snapped in half ava is not the one to play with please go sit down you better be glad Nicholas and Spencer was in that room as your protection. Because I'm telling you, you better go sit the hell down. Because the way that look on Ava face, Esme, you had a smack waiting for you. <laughs> you better go sit down somewhere. Because Ava looked like she's in a dragon mood right about now. She'll grab you by that head and drag your ass down the stairs. You better go sit down, little girl. That's You don't want to mess with a full-size lady. Go sit down. I'm telling you, she, she, she's, she cruising for a bruising at this point. She better go sit down. Because Ava looked like she's not in the mood for her. Like, you keep campaigning for that ass whooping, she's going to elect you. Now go sit down somewhere. I'm telling you, storming out the room. Don't nobody care about you being mad, Esme. Um, you know, and Spencer realized that he ain't got no choice but to take whatever rules and restrictions Ava put on him. He ain't got too much of a choice. And he know it. Um... You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. You wanna keep getting that ten grand a week? Better play play by the rules. I mean, at the end of the day, Spencer should be happy that Ava's even letting him have the money at all. You know what I mean? Like, don't sit here and get mad because she's putting restrictions on you. Be grateful that you're getting access to ten thousand dollars a week. That's a lot of money. And if he don't want it, my ass will take it. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Ava came to the realization that Spencer's little reconciliation with Esme is not for real because 
he kept trying to get out of his restitution duties at the gallery. And he kept bringing up Rory and Trina and all that stuff. So Ava started putting two and two together like, okay, so you still got feelings for Trina. So you're not serious about you and Esme getting back together. Ava is on to his game at this point. Ava clocked it. She clocked it. And you know on tomorrow's episode, she definitely going to push to find out, like, what exactly do you have planned? Like, what are you up to? You know what I mean? Because Ava caught wind of it real quick when he started talking. And that's, see, that's when people be, like, paying attention to what you say. And that's how they put two and two together real fast. It's about time. More and more people are starting to figure it out. It's about damn time. Because his little plan is taking way too long to work. Um, speaking of, Jocelyn is another one. She's fed up at this point. Um, because she know Cameron is lying to her. Like, he's holding back information in regards to Spencer and Esme. She know it. Um, her whole plan is to break up Spencer and Esme. Even, like, Cameron was not on board with that plan. And Trina's not on board with that either. And I could totally see why they're not on board because, in my opinion, that it does it doesn't do you any good to break them up because she thinks, well, if they're broken up, then that'll just isolate Esme. And no, 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 no. I do agree with Trina. If you break them up, what reason would would Esme have to stay in town? She could easily just dip off out of the country somewhere, and you wouldn't be able to find her to clear your name. So I totally get where Trina was coming from. That's a no go. That's <laughs> that's not a plan I would entertain. I'm just saying. Um, I feel bad for Trina, though, because she does still have a lot of good things going on in her life, but she just can't plan for the future right now. She feels like, you know, the future is for her is very, you know, bleak, like with this school investigation going on with this trial coming up. She just feels like she can't plan properly for the future because her future may, you know, have prison bars behind it. Um, Everybody trying to get her to think positive and, you know, think clear and like, you know, you're going to beat this, but it's kind of hard to do. I mean, there's no evidence to, you know, to prove otherwise for the time being. You know, they still haven't proved Esme's guilt yet. And this trial is is coming up quickly. It's coming up soon. Um, But she do need to think about the positives in her life. I mean, you got Rory, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, you got good friends that's, you know, on your side and stuff like that. You know, you still got a lot of positives. And now she done got the report back from the school about their findings in this investigation. I really hope they don't expel her from school because I know that would just crush her. You know what I mean? Like, I know it would crush her to get kicked out of that school. So I hope that's not what that report is. Hopefully they decided to exonerate her on that as far as the school is concerned. That's what I'm hoping for. So anyway, moving on from that, Sam... Still hasn't found this nanny. You know, Esme's little nanny, Maggie, or whatever. She still hasn't found this nanny yet. And I'm like, why is it so hard to find this nanny? She has a name on the lady. Why is it so hard to find her? You know, but Carly kept pushing for more and more information. I'm like, Carly, be quiet. Like, you should know whether you're dealing with the cops, whether you're dealing with a private investigator, they can't tell you every little detail about things. Especially when you're not the one who hired the PI in the first place. So it's like, relax. Um, you know, she wanted to push for who's the source that told you about the nanny. Sam was like, I can't tell you that. And she just kept pushing. Sam was like, listen, I can't tell you all that because Sam has to be very discreet at the moment. You know, if she goes too hard and Esme finds out that she's being investigated, it could mess everything up. Like Esme will keep her guard up and, you know, more so than ever. So Sam has to be very careful about this. I'm just as curious as to why this is taking so long to figure out who this girl Nanny was. Is the Nanny even real? Like, why is it taking so long to figure this information out? Like, let's move this along, please, and thank you. It's so funny the concern Sam and Carly has for Spinelli. Like, Sam was sitting there telling Carly how, oh, Spinelli's behaving strangely. He's dressing strangely now. He's dressing different now. It's called dressing like a damn adult and not some little child that's still shopping Baby Gap. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, he's a grown man. Good. I'm glad Spinelli's dressing different. It's about damn time. He need to get out that little boys department and finally get into the men's department. And Sam ought to know, hell, she been dressing different, too. She don't normally wear that little 
dreary black ensemble she normally wears. Is <laughs> she actually wearing colors? <laughs> I'm like, listen, if y'all don't leave Spinelli alone, let that man be different. Good. He finally growing up. It's about time. Hell, we all got to grow at some point, don't we? I mean, shit, I would love to be 15, 16 again, but guess what? Sadly, I cannot. Um, But Spinelli, I, you know what? I'm not even totally surprised that he's behind this whole dating app or whatever, this whole dating situation. Um, That's right up his alley. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely. But he wants, for whatever reason, he wants to keep it on a hush-hush because he gave that Zelda, Zelda woman, whatever her name is, um... He gave her like a wad of cash or whatever because she had to handle that whole Brit situation for him because Cody ass was sitting there talking, telling Brit, oh, she should sue the Metro court. She should, she should uh, sue the dating service and stuff. I'm like, that's a whole lot of lawsuits. <laughs> like, you might want to chillax. Um, talking about, oh, that was neglect. She need to sue. She need to this. I'm like, Cody, be quiet. You just want to cut of the money. Shut up. I see your game. Be quiet, sir. We know you looking for a come up, but you're not going to get it around here. Um, It was hilarious when Britt pushed his ass into the pool. I said, there you go. Get your payback on him. Um, So homegirl that's behind this dating service, well, she's a proxy pretty much for Spinelli. She basically offered Britt a free six-month service and stuff like that. Um... I'm still confused as to why Spinelli don't want people to know about this. Like, what's the harm in it? All your friends knowing about your, you know, dating service. Like, I'm pretty sure everybody would congratulate them and be happy for them. You know, that's a huge business, you know, big business right there. Having your own dating service, that's freaking phenomenal. I would be shouting it off the rooftop if it was me. It was funny, though, how Britt tried to blame Zelda for her reputation being at stake. I'm like, the only reason your reputation is at stake is because... Of you standing there going on a drunken tangent. That's why your reputation is a state. You know, plus the whole pool incident too. But still, it's more about that little drunken tangent you went on. Hell, you a co-chief of staff. You know better than that. Act coof. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta act like you got some coof on you in public. Especially when, you know, you're the head honcho. You know, you should know better than that, Brick. But um, anyway... Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Have a great night. Peace.